Hi everyone, it's Joey Remini here from seekingbalance.com.au. Today I want to talk a little more on neurodiversity and I want to introduce a new concept, a new term which I learned recently from Lindsay McKerrith at Creative Method Creative and the term is neurocomplexity. And when I first heard this term, to be a neurocomplex person, to live with neurocomplexity, something in my bones just had an, a moment of pause and exhale, like, yeah, this is something we have to talk about. Being neurodiverse is talking about how each person is wired beautifully differently. So we all have our neural maps and neural connections mapped throughout our body, making sense of the world in our own unique way. Some people fall into a neuronormative or neurotypical way of communicating, being, behaving, sleeping, eating, thinking, feeling, all of that. They, they fit the culturally normative standards and other people fall outside of those norms and are considered neurodivergent. When we bring in neurocomplexity, we're also talking about how we can have different amounts of depth, intensity, complexity with how our nerves, neurons are firing and wiring physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So looking at the cognitive parts of our mind and how thoughts can, we can have more thoughts, we can have deep, intense and complex thoughts. And that in and of itself brings a whole range of challenges and strengths that we need to learn about if we want to understand how to get the best out of our, the brain and body that we're born with. So there's the cognitive side of it. There's the sensory side of it, of how our sensory um, neurons are mapped and wired, you know, so we can all be sitting down and looking at exactly the same landscape. But someone who may be living in a neurocomplex body will literally be buzzing and thrumming and just feeling and hearing and sensing so much from the sensory world. And again, when we fall outside of these neuronorm or neurotypical categories or baskets, we can end up just feeling like we're not experiencing the world in the right way because the way we're experiencing a sunset is so deep and intense and moving but that's not being mirrored back to us by the people around us. So we can get this person environment misfit where time and time again, moment after moment, there's this mismatch of how I'm sensing and feeling the world in my own way that is not seen or received or understood by the people around me. There can also be attentional differences. People with neurocomplexities and neurodivergences We'll have a different way of organizing information and how we pay attention to things and what we pay attention to and for how long we pay attention to things. And none of this makes us wrong, bad or abnormal. This is all about difference being celebrated as a beautiful thing because as a human species, we need this diversity. It's our robustness. And as different humans are applying their attention differently throughout the day, we then have this diversity of human interaction where we're all picking up on different parts, different flavors of life. And as we gather all that data from the world around us and digest it in our own beautifully different ways, we can have that output that then gets shared back out into the ecosystem. So we have diversity if and when it's understood and celebrated, everybody benefits. So we've got cognition, sensory differences, attentional differences, creativity differences. So many neurodivergent or neurocomplex people um, can get very much lost in their inner world. And I'm like this with a vivid imagination and I can see things very clearly in my mind's eye and I can have a really deep relationship with my imaginal states, my inner world, the astral planes, and there's a profound sense of multidimensionality to how I experience the world, which may or may not make sense to many other people that simply don't experience that type of neural wiring. And then the last one that Lindsay talks about is intuition, which is how we make sense of the data we're collecting. So as a neurodivergent or neurocomplex person, it's arguably we're taking in a lot of data in the world, ideas, conversations, senses, smells, touch, everything, judgment, assumptions, politics, culture, multi-generational information. We're taking in all of the unseen stuff that is not obvious. Our body's actually processing that. 
And it comes into our body and then intuitively we're having to make sense of all of this information. And quite often I think we can feel very lost in the world because what's going on in the outer world doesn't make sense to the information we're collecting in the inner world. So again, it comes back to this person environment mismatch. So as a neurodivergent or neurocomplex being, it can feel that our needs are not met, that we're not seen, we're not heard. We can lack a sense of safety, attunement, belonging, friendships, community, family. So it can really arrive at this place of a lot of shame, a lot of tendencies to mask, to camouflage ourselves, to compensate for our differences, to fawn, to fight, flight, freeze, fawn, to get stuck in really subtle, insidious and complex trauma loops. And really all we're trying to do is to make sense of ourselves and make sense of the world. The reason I want to talk about this is I've just been hosting a small group called Series with, there's nine of us. And we, we're getting together and we're talking about neurocomplexity and we're mirroring each other and we're learning about each other's sensitivities and we're talking about how it is in the world of dating or in the workplace or as a parent. And in all these different contexts, we're having to learn how to turn our gaze inwards and feel what is real for me. Because at the end of the day, if I'm not going to fit those neuronormative and neurotypical boxes and I can just so beautifully put that aside and step into this mysterious place of being neurodivergent, neurocomplex, it opens up all this possibility of discovery of, well, who am I? How do I exist in the world? Where are my edges? How am I in relationship to myself? And how am I making sense of the outer world? And we, we can begin to really open up a broader, wider, more holistic conversation about the many patterns and stories and narratives and beliefs that are shaping much of our sensory experience. And in the context of the work I do, some of this shame and the stories and beliefs we're holding about not fitting in or not belonging, not feeling safe, can feed our tinnitus, our vertigo, our dizziness, our pain, anxiety, depression. So the, the body somaticizes. So what we've been talking about in these small group calls is really looking into who am I? How do I exist in the world? What are my sensitivities? What are my neurocomplex needs? How do I engage in the world in a way that feels nourishing for me? How do I begin to really take seriously what I'm sensing and feeling so that I'm not gaslighting myself, that I'm actually showing up to the truth of my inner world, that I'm collecting all that data within myself, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, holistically gathering that information I have inside of me, taking it seriously, being loving and kind toward that information, allowing it to make sense to myself first and foremost, and then we talk about how can we gently become self-advocates out in the world if there are ways I need people to slow down or speed up, to give me more space, to be respectful of my boundaries, to notice when my boundaries are being violated, to have all of these conversations. If we haven't had this language around neurodiversity and neurocomplexity, which most of us won't, we may have decades of literally masking, pushing through all of this effort to fit into a world that is not designed for us or doesn't match us. And we're having to really slow down and pause and think, is this nourishing me? And there's also this backdraft of, wow, there's been so many decades throughout my life where I haven't had my own back. I have been denying or minimizing or dismissing myself. I haven't been able to stand up for myself. I haven't realized my boundaries are being violated. And so circling back to the somatics and the sensory body and the sensations or symptoms that can be screaming at us and uncomfortable and painful, I believe that's often the body's way of saying, I can't do this anymore. My boundaries are being violated. I don't feel listened to. I don't feel heard. I don't feel safe enough. Please turn your direction inwards and reconnect. So the body, in my opinion, is really the map and the compass that's guiding us through all of this neurocomplexity. As we can really keep directing ourselves back into the body, sensing and feeling, cultivating safety, learning about our window of tolerance and how to really gently expand and broaden our sense of being able to feel the intensity and the depth without shutting ourselves down and being afraid of feeling, which is a really, really common protect and defense strategy. 
as we have these conversations, as we learn to normalize our depth, our intensity, our complexity, as we see ourselves in others, as we, we begin to ask new questions, things begin to slowly make sense and things begin to change. So some of the things we're talking about together in our small group call series is, you know, just um, getting to know our boundaries, getting to know our center, learning how the data, this invisible unseen data is entering us all day long, but is it leaving us? So we're looking, we're really talking a lot about emptying the data, data in, data out, and not being afraid of, of allowing the world to touch us and enter us. So we can also have such strong boundaries that we actually shut the world out and again, that doesn't tend to lead to healthy outcomes, that the body is designed to be porous, to allow information in and to allow information out. So we've been talking about how can we be touched by each other and connected to each other and listening to each other's stories, but they're not holding each other's stories in our bodies to actually let other people's stories and other people's information touch us, shape us, and then move through us. So this idea of output, and eventually we want to be in a position where we have the freedom and the unapologetic sass to get creative with how we live our life and how we begin to move our neurocomplex ideas and dreams creatively outside of us. And I believe that's where we're headed culturally is that we need more spaces where neurodivergence, neurodiversity, neurocomplexity is welcome, is celebrated, is explored deeply and sensitively and gently so that we can build up our confidence to understand who we are, how we're meaningfully engaged in the world, how we fully respect our inner world and show up for ourselves, and then how we can have this beautiful creative expression outwards that allows our difference to pollinate out into the world because I believe the outer world needs outliers. We need people with a different way of being in the world, a different way of feeling the world, a different way of seeing the world. And it's important that we have that courage and that capacity to go through the disintegrative process of losing who we thought we were, falling into a million trillion different tiny fragments and pieces and that slowly rebuilding ourselves back into a version of ourselves that makes sense, that feels authentic, that has integrity and learning how to really reclaim our space, honour our boundaries and live in that dynamic capacity, which is probably worth mentioning as a neurodivergent or neurocomplex being, we are even more, I think, receptive to the fact that life is a dynamic moving beast inside of ourselves and outside of us is constant change. Everything is granular. Everything is tiny little particles vibrating around at different frequencies. And we're in this washing machine of constant fluctuation. So how can we learn to be present and responsive to our direct experience so we can most accurately and powerfully support wherever our brain, body, soul, is intersecting in that moment. So these are some of the really important conversations of shifting us out of the mainstream medical model and questioning why do I have these chronic symptoms and sensations that nobody can explain and nobody understands. I think it's very powerful to stop and think, am I possibly neurodivergent? Am I possibly gifted? Am I possibly neurocomplex? And the best way to Explore this for yourself, I think, is to read books, listen to podcasts, connect to other neurodivergent and neurocomplex beings and see if you see yourself in them and really get that sense of sovereignty, self-authority, self-permission to be in this identity journey, self-identity, self-determined identity in a way that you're the expert in you, you know you. So I wanted to introduce this beautiful topic because I think it's deeply life-changing. It's really helped me explore more about myself and my difference and it's helped me uncover many of the subconscious or semi-conscious parts of myself that I had never really put a lot of time into exploring because I had never seen them in, seen those parts of myself in other people. So once I started to find my neurokin and my mirrors, I could come to life a little bit more. I could explore more of my intensity and depth. I could take it more seriously. I could feel how real it was. So it's a really important part of our individuation, of our self-realization, of being an adult, of being human, 
And it's also an essential part of allowing our body to stop somaticizing, being caught in symptom and sensation loops. And as we start to understand ourselves, support ourselves, advocate for ourselves and get that creative output, the body is no longer holding on to so many tension patterns. So there really does become a softening and a centering of the physical body once we line up the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual aspects of our neurocomplexity. So it's a really rich topic. To learn more about me, you can visit seekingbalance.com.au. And where I learned about neurocomplexity was with Method Creative. So I'll put a link down for Method Creative as well, where Lindsay McCarrath has some resources and services as well for you to check out. So it's a little bye for now.